percent. So for white people who don't know, white Jesus in the black community is a mythical f- creature that has enormous power, right? It, it's <laughs> insane for anyone to believe in a deity that doesn't look like them, right? right. So, but in the black community, we're just in love with Renaissance paintings and Jesus is white as fuck, all right? So we have the same infatuation that your weird hippie aunt has with Indian men with long beards mm-hmm. and their mysticism. We have that with white Jesus. So that you've just helped me understand. Wow. Because I've always wondered, like, what the fuck is it up with white people and East Indian people? Because like, Vikram, who directed Trigger Warning, also has a, a documentary where he creates a fake religion and convinces, you know, white middle class people to follow him. That is a crazy one, the white Jesus one, right? Oh, uh, white Jesus is a motherfucker, bro. Like, hey, man, I'm going to get me a shirt that says white people won, stay woke. And and what I mean by that is <laughs> Western civilization, it, 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 it's, this is the latest phase. Like, people have to understand there have been many empires and civilizations. There was a time where Mali in Africa and Kemen in Africa were the biggest civilizations and colonizers on earth. Later, Persia. Biggest. Co- like, you've had systems and right now the west has just for the last thousand years or so has been kicking and dominating ass a lot of what we see on the news between the west and what we call the middle east now what was once um western persia or western asia this is thousands of years war you know you're hearing islam versus christianity but it's really two ideologies that have been fighting for thousands of years over how the globe should be governed so with, with that shit man it's like there's no there's no stopping this shit but white jesus springs out of that and kind of goes everywhere and colonizes everything. So, you know, the church pops up with candy for kids, Bibles for you. And by the way, we're going to be gone a while, but we're going to leave this guy here on the wall so you know what the ideal, what God's son looked like. So if God's son looks like a doobie brother, (laughs) then so does God. (laughs) God looks like Jim Morrison. (laughs) Jim Morrison with a full beard. Yeah, straight to fuck. Wow. 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 Yeah, it's when really Jesus was probably a tan guy with dark hair and curly eye, curly hair and you know and, and brown eyes that was saying shit that the government and the church didn't like, so they knocked him the fuck off. I, I don't believe, just for the record, I, I don't believe in the big three, the Abrahamic religions. I'm not into them. But the books I've read and they're amazing graphic novels. I kind of read them like a like a, like a graphic novel of sorts, right? And when you look at the people who Christ died with, right? It was he was a, he was up there with thieves. The last person he saved before he got out of here was a thief, was a, was a confessed thief, was dying right next to him. And he was like, you know, we're going to go on this together. That's, that's an amazing thing. So as you're serving your Savior or your Messiah, you need to be thinking about who he spent his time with. You know, he was with liars and thieves. He was in the streets. He was with people who were alleged to be prostitutes. And I think that if we start to turn our attention to those places and we put our intentions in good there, we do produce on the out on the other side better but as long as we look at religion as something that makes us holy makes us clean washes us of our sins and and we become pious in that i think religion will be something that's forever kind of harmful and help to create that and i think that 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 believing that some people are good or evil doesn't allow us to say well what could we do to fix those ghettos to fix those depressed areas because for every ghetto where i'm from for every ghetto that's in a city in the south I can show you a mountainous region with a trailer park that's just as bad. For sure. And those yeah. and those and those kids deserve a life better than oxycodone addiction and, and turmoil and pain too. You're right, hundred percent. I believe in God, man. I don't believe in religion. I think religion is fucked up. You understand me? Because I think crazy white people wrote the Bible. You understand me? You know, you think white people call it the word. I believe God wrote his word in your essence. You understand me? That's the genius of my father. It's written in your essence. Nobody ever had to tell you it's wrong to kill your mama. Somehow you innately know that. <laughs> so you born knowing right and wrong, nigga. Then you got this book that'll fuck your head up, nigga. Because I sit there and read the motherfucker over and over again, and some of the stories don't hold water, nigga. How the fuck you gonna tell me Adam and Eve was the only two people? And then they had children. What do you do? Fuck his daughter? How the fuck the rest of us get here? <laughs> Incestual motherfucker, you freak. <laughs> then he told us Noah built an ark. 60 cubits by 80 cubits by 40 cubits. How the fuck you get every animal on earth two by two in this motherfucker? It's in Africa. How'd the deer from North America get there? Did they swim? <laughs> Did they meet the nigga halfway? <laughs> What crazy white man wrote this shit? Think about it. It's like nursery rhyme stories, nigga. It said Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. 
what the fuck is Jack and Jill going up a hill to get water for? Water flows downhill. <laughs> Them little motherfuckers was up there fucking. <laughs> That's why they said Jill broke, broke, broke down and broke her crown. Nigga, she lost her virginity. That motherfucker was fucking. <laughs> I don't believe Jesus died on the cross. This is God's son. He could walk on water, feed a thousand with a loaf of bread. How the fuck three nails killed this nigga? I know niggas with nine bullet wounds still walking around. His name is 50 Cent. You telling me this nigga colder than Jesus? <laughs> think about it, think. It ain't illegal yet, think. Don't just read shit and just believe it. Yeah, that's the truth, it's in the book that the white man gave me and now I don't have a country. <laughs> You understand me? You know what I mean? I think the whole world is at war right now over motherfucking religion. That's all this Iraq shit is about. The motherfucking Christian faith wants a foothold in Muslim territory. Why? Because Christianity is conducive to Wall Street. Islam is not conducive to Wall Street. You're not going to sell no Nikes because they wear their own shit. You ain't going to sell no Maybelline because them bitches got bells on. <laughs> It's not conducive to making money. Now, Jesus, he conducive to making money. Jesus let you fuck all week, suck some dick, smoke some weed, give him $20 on Sunday, he cool. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad, way too strict. Got a face to eat five times a day. Nigga be at the club getting your groove on, nigga, that time hit, nigga, what he eat? <laughs> nigga gotta travel with a compass, nigga. <laughs> and be in the club, nigga. Motherfuckers think you got a new dance. Nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> so the war is really about religion. You understand me? It's between Jesus and Muhammad. Because motherfuckers argue over who the messenger is. The Christians say Jesus is the messenger. The Muslims say Muhammad is the messenger. Who gives a fuck who the messenger is? Did you get the message? <laughs> they got the same goddamn message. Did you get the message? It's like killing a mailman because it wasn't the same mailman last week. Did you get your check, motherfucker? <laughs> who gives a fuck who brought the motherfucker? <laughs> Both of them brothers said, do not praise me. Praise he who sent me. But everybody called up, oh, Jesus. Jesus, help me. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus sent up there. Nigga, that ain't my job. That's my pop's job. <laughs> yeah. If I was Jesus, I wouldn't come back. I ain't bullshit. <laughs> God be like, uh, Jesus, time to go back. No, fuck no. <laughs> Hell no. Last time I was down there, they nailed a nigga up. Hell no. Them of us got guns now. I ain't got shit. <laughs> you can kiss my ass. Send Moses. That nigga got a stick. <laughs> Send David. At least that nigga got a slingshot. <laughs> I'm your only son, Pop. Why you keep doing this shit to me, man? I can hear some Christian minds in here. He going to hell. <laughs> Cause Christians can't wait to send somebody to hell. You going to hell. Who the fuck told you? you know what I mean, like God came down and said, let that nigga know he going to hell. I'm kind of busy right now. <laughs> I made in God's image. If I have a sense of humor, that means my father has a sense of humor. God probably up there cracking up right now. He probably up there, hey Jesus, come here. That crazy nigga I made his own. He was talking about you, nigga. He said you whistle like this. <laughs> oh, don't get mad, nigga. That shit was funny. That shit was funny. <laughs> well, I think the distribution of information has changed so radically over the last couple hundred years, and particularly over the last 20, that you're seeing these trends now where more people are inclined to abandon uh, a lot of the, even if you remain religious or remain, you, you keep a, a, a thought or a belief in a higher power, pe people are more inclined to entertain these concepts of science and to take in the understanding of what has been observed and documented and, yeah. and written about among scholars and academics and there's more, there's more people accepting that. If you look yeah. at the number of agnostic people now as opposed to 20, 30 years ago, it's, it's, it's rising. It's changing. And I think there's also, because of you and because of Neil deGrasse Tyson and you know, Sean Carroll and all these other people that are public intellectuals that are discussing this kind of stuff, people like myself 
have a far greater understanding of this than I think people did 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And that trend is continuing, I think, in a very good direction. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, what, what we should say is that science, we don't know all the answers. So we don't know where the laws of nature came from. We don't know why the universe began in the way that it did, uh, if indeed it had a beginning. So we don't know why the Big Bang was very, very highly ordered, which is ultimately, as Sean Carroll actually, you mentioned him, often points out, and he's right, that the, the whole difference, the only difference between the past and the future, the so-called arrow of time, is that in the past the universe was really ordered and it's getting more disordered. And that's that, that, that necessary state of, of, of order at the start of the universe which is really the reason that we exist. That's the reason, because the universe began in a particular form. We don't know why that was. So we, we, we will probably find out at some point, and it'll be something to do with the laws of nature. But So I, I'm always careful. I don't want to... Science can sometimes sound arrogant, right? It can sometimes sound like it's the, it's the discipline of saying to people, well, you're not right. Yes, you know? yes. And it's not the discipline of saying you're not right. It's saying this is what we found out. Um, yeah. So it, I, I like to say that it provides a framework within which if you want to philosophize or you want to do theology or you want to you want to ask these deep questions about why we're here, you have to operate within that framework because it's just an observational framework. Yes. So everything we've said is stuff we've discovered. It's not stuff that someone made up. Right? We, the, we, we, you know, we understand nuclear physics. We can build nuclear reactors, for example. So we understand the physics of stars. So we, we understand that the stars built the carbon and oxygen and we know how they did it. Um, we can see it because, as I said before, we can, if you look far out into the universe, you're looking way back in time. And as you look back in time, you see less carbon and less oxygen. So we have a direct observation that in the earliest universe, there wasn't any because <laughs> we can see it. And now we see that there is some and we know how it was made. So I think it's, always, it's important to um, be humble when you're talking about science and you're not saying this is the way that it is. I mean, <laughs> you are in a sense, but you know, it's not, it's not able to answer ultimate questions at the moment. It's not able to answer even whether the universe had a beginning or not. We don't even know that. And I gave a talk to, um, I was asked to give a talk to some bishops in the UK about cosmology. And I said, yeah, that'd be great fun and so i went and gave him this talk and, and and at the end i said i've got some questions so if the universe is eternal and it might be it might not have had a beginning if it's eternal what place is there for a creator you know that's that's a good question right they didn't they didn't have an answer of course right an eternal but, creator but yeah but I, I think that these it might be eternal right. and we might discover that so we don't, we don't know at the moment but we might so i think my point is that these other human uh, desires, it's very natural to religions, a natural thing, right? People, you see it all across the world in all different cultures. But I think that in the 21st century, it, religion needs to operate within that framework. If it's, going, if it's going to operate, there are still great mysteries and it is appropriate to think about what it means to be human and I've given you my view of what it means. But... But it, I don't think the problem comes when you when your your theology or your philosophy forces you to deny some facts, some measurement. Now these things are measurements. We, we we're not saying it's not my opinion the universe is thirteen point eight billion years old. We measured it. It's like having an opinion between the distance from L.A. to New York. Now, you can't have an opinion on that. Right. <laughs> we know what it is, <laughs> and it's the same. Right. You know. It's like, you know, the, these things, you know, the people say the Earth's flat or whatever. So it isn't, and we've measured it. So it's just stop it, you know. So, But that doesn't mean you can't be spiritual and you can't be religious, I would say. And it doesn't mean you can't believe in God or gods. Or, it, it, that's not ruled out. 